Hello YouTube, Reddit Math here, and welcome back to some more Door Kickers. So, in this video I wanted to showcase a little bit of the RPG elements of the game. After completing the first mission, uh, now in the upper right, we've got uh, this level 2, with uh, like a, which is our squad rank, basically. Uh, we've earned three roster stars and a doctrine whistle point thing. Uh, if we pop into the roster, you're now going to see our squad here and all of the equipment that they're able to use. Now right now, everybody is the same point man class. And you can deck out your point man class in different things, but we don't have any of that stuff unlocked at the moment. So everybody's using this G17 pistol, uh, as you can see. So number of different loadouts, uh, some of them getting fancier and fancier with uh, silenced pistols and, and things like that. There's a number of different loadouts for the vests, uh, some of them offering like a lot of protection but not a lot of mobility, uh, while some of them offering exactly the opposite. There are also these different classes up here. Uh, we have yet to unlock these because our squad rank isn't high enough. But eventually, these other classes are going to be able to use things like a primary weapon, like an assault rifle or a carbine, um, as well as like the shield class, eventually getting a, a larger riot shield. Also got these utility pouches. Uh, right now, we're equipped with flashbangs and breaching charges. As you can see, there are other options for that eventually as well. Uh, finally, support gear, spy cameras, and then uh, basically different ways of breaching doors, dynamic breaching hammers, bolt cutters, breaching kits. So as we play with these characters, they're going to be gaining police officer ranks up here. So uh, the two characters that went through the first mission already are both police officer ones, while all of the other characters are just rookies. Uh, you can change up which of the, the characters are actually going to be going through uh, the different single missions in order to gain more experience for them. And we're actually going to go ahead and do that because characters also have different uh, like natural inclinations as far as starting stats are concerned. These two characters actually don't have the best uh, marksmanship or assault shooting skills. Uh, like This guy's a fantastic field skills guy, meaning he would do a great job uh, as a point man, like um, breaking through locks and, and accomplishing those types of tasks. But for right now, I'd really like to just have some very on-point shooters so we're going to go ahead and swap out for Ryan Henry here. Uh, you can edit the names and the call signs. Uh, but this character uh, has very good marksmanship, uh, decent assault shooting, and his field skills are just kind of low. Um, additionally, let's see, we've got him as a good assault shooter. Him is really good marksmanship. Uh, might make a decent, uh, like, snipery type long-range shooter later. Um, and then that guy's kind of got... The best of both worlds. So we're going to go ahead and make these two, uh, I think, our, our primary guys for right now, Bruce Checkley and Ryan Henry. And then we're going to go ahead and back up and start mission two. Stacking rooms, objectives, eliminate all terrorists. We've got our five tangos there. And we'll go ahead and load in and take a look at it. Lock and load. Let's do this. So in this one, uh, again, just two rooms, but as you can see, uh, there's no separating hallway, so it's going to be a little bit more dangerous making the transition from the two rooms this time. Um, I think we'll probably set up our initial character to just button hook in and get to right about there to more or less just be safe uh, in that spot. And we'll have him wait there while his buddy pushes into right about here. Okay. He's going to need to check that way and we'll have him check. Uh, once they've done this, um, let's have him move up to right there and get ready with the flashbang into this room. Say he's there and then come in uh, right there, turn and I'm trying to think of the best way to coordinate the, the flashbang just to make sure that he doesn't run into uh, the room while it's still going off. So I'll actually go ahead and hold him on alpha and then have him push in there, turn. And we'll see how this is going to go off. 
So, a little problematic with uh, that initial step there um, to take the flashbang throw, but other than that, I, I'd say things uh, all went pretty well. Um, that does mean, well, they both ended up healthy, so I guess his uh, uh, vest absorbed the majority of that damage. Karma came out on top with uh, four kills to Reese's one. And now that we've gotten a little bit more experience, let's go ahead and pop back out to our roster and let's make our first purchase. Um, I like the 1911 uh, in these early missions because of the stopping power. Um, you can see the difference there. Uh, this one's maxed out versus the G17, which is at one, two, three, four of eight. So it's like 50%. Uh, this is going to have a much smaller magazine, but the, the one shot kills it affords, I think are probably worth it. Go ahead and purchase that item, and then what we can do is go ahead and set this as the default for the point man class. Now, it won't un immediately change everybody else, which I kind of find annoying when you only have one class. Uh, later on, it's very easy to just like toggle them uh, to another class and then back again. But uh, right now, we don't really have that option. So that'll make uh, these two characters have uh, a slightly better uh, primary weapon, even though it's their secondary, since it's all they've got, um, that'll probably be worthwhile. Uh, as you can also see, it is tracking all their stats, the number of missions, tankos killed, shots fired, the total accuracy, distance walked, and time waiting for a go code. Uh, so these are the RPG elements. Uh, we've almost got our squad rank here uh, to the next level, and additionally, our doctrine points, which we have yet to look at. These are going to be upgrades that affect our entire squad. Uh, they're things like... You can think of them basically as changes in the training regiment for the characters. Uh, the idea that, you know, we're going to be doing more, more close quarter drills or more transitionary drills and, and things like that, like switching between weapons. Uh, these first levels required to unlock the, the later stuff. Uh, as you can see, we've got point shooting. Uh, increases aiming speed at close range. Surgical shooting, which just increases the precision of the aiming. I believe that's going to cause them to do like bonus damage. Uh, they'll get better shots on target and less uh, just wounding shots, things like that. And then quick draw for faster handgun deployment. Eventually, we're going to unlock double taps, long range drills, Mozambique. Uh, the Mozambique technique uh, that double taps are then followed up by headshots if uh, there's a failure to stop. And finally, center axis relock uh, allows point blank shooting. In other words, when we kind of awkwardly run into somebody uh, as we're moving forward, they gain an advantage there that they're like right on top of the guy. Uh, and they don't get uh, tripped up. Eventually, we're uh, going to unlock long guns and shotgun doctrines. Uh, these require us to, of course, unlock the assaulter and then the breacher class uh, for those to become relevant. Uh, for right now, we'll go ahead and pick up surgical shooting, which is just going to increase the precision at all ranges. So basically, we get to be better shots uh, overall. We're more precise with that. And that is going to be our squad for right now. So this will be the end of episode and mission two. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, if you are, feel free to leave a like or a comment. If you have anything to say about this or any of my other episodes, feel free to subscribe in order to continue to see more. And I will catch you guys next time.